just to add something in here, I have configured a an internet routable uh, zone, which is nlb-solutions.com. So you can think that this pretty much can be used for external resolution as well. So for example, instead of adding an internal uh, address in here, I can add my external mail server address. So if I have a mail server somewhere, um, I can add this mail record for nlbsolutions.com to be on an external IP address. So instead of adding internally here, I can add 172.60. 58.1.155 for example and it will pretty much look for this it, I need to clear the cache once again and let's try it will look externally for my mail server instead of internally so there is one more thing that you need to know uh, one more additional zone and uh, if you go ahead and right click on forward lookup zones um, a small wizard to appear and I've already explained what's the difference between the primary the secondary zone but there is another one which is called the stop zone and this zone pretty much will connect to a specific domain for example and will uh, only download uh, the information about the naming server the name servers and the start start of authority records so this will be dynamically updated and you will need to have internet connectivity so for example you can connect to an external zone for example let's say microsoft.com and this top zone will be automatically updated with the authoritative servers for the zone so if your clients try to resolve a site within Microsoft.com, your DNS server will use this stub zone to check which is the name server and will uh, contact the name server to get the, the site information for, um, for this uh, website, for example. Another way for you to configure a forwarding option is the conditional forwarders. And what this means is if you want to create a um, forwarder for a specific DNS domain. So for example, I have a domain that is called nlblab.com. And if I want to all of the if any of my clients is trying to resolve something from nlblab.com, I will forward the request to 10.0.0.1 server. So it's saying that it's not able to resolve, but I'm pretty sure that uh, it will be. So if I add this conditional forwarder in here, I can just see that at the moment, yep, it's going to forward every single request for nlblab.com to this server, which is my domain controller. So if I try to, let's first try to clean the cache once again, and try to ping, for example, um, nlb dc01 nlblab.com, it will basically forward this request to my DNS server and to find this information. So if I try to ping another server, for example, WDS, it's not able to find it, but nevertheless, this is the idea behind the conditional forwarder. So the next thing that I want to speak about is the properties of the DNS server in general. So if you um, open the properties of your DNS server, you will see several tabs that are important. And during the configuration process where we configured uh, the zone in general, we um, basically went through uh, the multiple tabs that you can see in here and configured the settings. So if you configure something and you want to modify it on a later state, you can do this from here. Uh, one of the points is here. So um, let's start looking into the tabs. Uh, the first tab is the interface. So basically you can configure a DNS server to listen on all interfaces or on a specific interface. So if you have multiple interfaces connected to these machine, machines, you can specify only a single one. 
Um, the next tab is the forwarders and we already spoke about this one. Here you can add a forwarder uh, provided by an ISP and all of the requests that are, uh, your DNS is not able to resolve will be forwarded to this server. And you can see you have even the option to use uh, root hints if no forwarders are available or if you want uh, your DNS server to be as secure as possible, you can remove this tick box and it will basically, if the forwarder is not reachable, it will uh, not be able to resolve anything. So your clients will not be able to connect to the internet. The next one is the advanced tab and you he uh, here you have different options. I'm not going to speak about every single option. Uh, you need to go and search because it's going to be a um, massive video, massive lengthy video if I do this. The next tab is the root hint servers. You can see the 13 servers in here and you have the IP addresses, the external IP addresses. I think uh, there should be yep, IPv6 uh, addresses so they can resolve IPv6 as well. The next one is the debug logging. If you are experiencing any problems with uh, resolving any queries, you can enable this one and you can uh, later uh, check the log files uh, to see what's the problem. Event logging, uh, this will log DNS events in your event viewer. So um, you can specify what events do you want to see in there, only errors and warnings or all events. And the monitoring tab is important for you to check if you are troubleshooting DNS. So uh, if there are any problems with uh, the DNS server resolving anything, you can go in here and make a simple query again against DNS server or a recursive query. And you can perform automatic testing to see if um, there are any problems. So if I run test now, it will run this and it's going to pretty much fail. But Nevertheless, you can use the monitoring tab on the DNS server for uh, testing and um, you can see yeah, it failed. So uh, for testing and troubleshooting DNS. So just to fast forward things, I'm going to show you how you can configure aging and scavenging. And what this means is um, it will monitor the records in your DNS and will clean records that are not uh, refreshed, not updated recently. So you uh, can enable the automatic scavenging of stale records. And what this means is it's going to wait seven days with the non-refresh interval and then it's going to wait another se seven days with the refresh interval. Uh, so if the record is not updated in the next 14 days, the record will be automatically removed. So uh, this will clean your DNS server. And instead of having multiple uh, pretty much dead records in the zone, they will be automatically cleaned using the uh, server aging and scavenging. And that way you will keep your DNS server um, up to date and clean at the same time. Before we switch to the DNS um, policies, I just wanted to show you how the Active Directory integrated zone looks like. So you can see uh, when I open uh, the DNS on my DC01, I have uh, uh, the MS uh, DCS zone that is configured. And this is pretty much used for my domain to resolve important services like the global catalog and the PDC. And you can see that um, there are uh, even service location records which uh, points for a specific service in this case is the LDAP which is working on port 389. So this is how an Active Directory zone looks, out, looks like and just to add a bit more information about the um, records that you can configure. If you uh, go and configure a different type of record, you can see that uh, there are a lot of records uh, that you can choose from. And the most important and the most uh, common records that you will see is the C name, which will basically uh, configure a link. It will link a host name to a different name. So um, if you have a um, mail server, for example, what you can do is instead of the users um, uh, connecting to the host name of the actual server, you can configure mail to be linked to the name of the host server. That way users will be able to use mail.nobilab.com. Um, 
the other record that is important is the DNS key and this is going to be used for DNSSEC if you implement DNSSEC the most important record in the forward lookup zone the host A record and another one is the mail exchanger record and this basically um, points to where you have a mail server a mail server capable of routing emails so these are uh, important records other one is the um, txt uh, the service location i already talked about the txt record if you want to verify a domain um, you will be asked to create a txt record and this is the same um, with external domains with internet domains as well so if you want to verify a domain they will uh, give you a text and will say please create a txt record so this is the record you want to add so to end up the video I want to say a few words about uh, DNS policy and this is a new feature that was announced in Windows Server 2016 and with DNS policies you can basically manipulate how the DNS server will handle queries based on different factors. For example, you can add different subnets and uh, these subnets can be allowed or disallowed uh, by the DNS server to resolve queries. So you can have for example a guest Wi-Fi subnet that will uh, the DNS server you can configure it with the policy to disallow resolution so your DNS server will not resolve queries in this guest um, subnet just for example if you have an intruder that is trying to hack your environment through the guest Wi-Fi your DNS server will be safe using these policies so to demonstrate how to configure DNS policies, I will have to use PowerShell and the minimum version is 5.0. So I'm going to open PowerShell as administrator and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure a um, subnet, which is going to be my, um, my uh, guest Wi-Fi subnet. And I'm going to add first a DNS server client subnet which I'm going to name guest Wi-Fi and I'm going to specify the IPv4 subnet which is 192.168.0.0 slash 24 bit and now that I have the subnet in place I'm going to add a DNS server query resolution policy that will be named block um, list policy guest Wi-Fi and we'll add the action switch with ignore which will ignore all requests from this subnet and we'll have to specify the client subnet switch which is going to be equal to guest guest Wi-Fi okay I need to remove the space in here okay guest Wi-Fi and the I'm going to add the switch pass through so if I at this policy you will see that now I have um, a DNS server query resolution policy that will ignore and it's currently enabled that will ignore all the requests coming from the subnet that is in the guest Wi-Fi so um, this is how you can configure DNS policies and this is a um, fairly new topic so I suggest you go uh, online and search for information on how you can configure everything because uh, even I do not have the um, broad knowledge of um, and the time of course to provide every single information about this one so um, this was how you can configure a DNS in Windows Server 2016 and how you can uh, implement different uh, type of uh, properties like zones and records and you can modify them and configure them the way your company and organization um, needs so 
If you have any comments, you can always put them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. If you like the video, you can always hit the like button and subscribe to NLB Solutions because I'm going to proceed releasing new videos on the topic of Windows Server 2016. This was Nick from NLB Solutions. Thank you very much for viewing and see you in the next video.